Mexico is ramping up security along its southern border with Guatemala as officials look to crack down on migrant caravans. Mexican authorities are using more drones and militarized police to patrol hotspots where migrants try to cross over. And this all comes as the U.S. continues to see a surge of migrants, especially unaccompanied children, entering the border. So with more on this, let's bring in Mexico Bureau Chief for Reuters, Frank Jack Daniel. Thank you so much for joining us, um, Frank. So first off, sort of set the scene. What has been occurring at the border uh, between Mexico and Guatemala? And then how have Mexican authorities been responding? Hi, good morning. Um, yeah, there's been over the last few months, um, as you've seen on the on the U.S. border, on on the Mexico on the Mexican southern border with Guatemala, a, a steady increase in numbers of people coming in out of Central America. I think it's important to note that Central America has been through um, some pretty devastating hurricanes and was particularly hard hit by pandemic lockdowns last year, um, leading to a, a you know a sort of tipping point for a lot of people in the country. Um, so we've been seeing an increase in, in numbers, and Mexico, even before um, President Biden took office, um, was stepping up enforcement efforts. That you saw that at the very beginning, um, you know, in late January, with the with with an attempted uh, migrant uh, caravan. Both Guatemala and Mexico used a lot of um, their security forces to break up uh, that group of people. Um, and now in recent, uh, in the last week, I guess, uh, Mexico has announced a, you know, a larger um, operation in this uh, southern region from, it has a kind of narrow stretch called the Isthmus down to the border. Um, and it's very much focused as much on trying to stop individual migrants on trying to uh, clamp down on the uh, smuggling networks and that are moving a lot of people up. Um, you know, up the Gulf Coast uh, towards Texas. Um, so f one of the things, Frank, that I think is sometimes gets lost in the way that this is framed um, in the news media is exactly why some of these asylum seekers are coming from, how arduous and treacherous the journey is. Uh, there was a Washington Post uh, op-ed this week by Leon Krauss, who uh, wrote this. Uh, if the alternative was famine, gang violence, kidnapping, rape, or sexual slavery, wouldn't you bet it all on the journey north? So explain to our viewers, uh, sort of unbundle that for us, and which countries in Central America are these asylum seek uh, seekers coming from that they face such disastrous, such perilous um, circumstances in those home countries that compel them to take this journey? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, at the moment and in, in recent months, um, Honduras and Guatemala really are the two countries which uh, most people are leaving from. Um, and as I mentioned a little bit before there, I think, you know, what's really happened in the last year is, in that, is a number of factors coinciding. Um, these are violent countries. There is a lot of gang violence, although that is perhaps less severe than it was a few years ago. Uh, what you're really seeing is a situation where, um, thanks to the pandemic, uh, which, you know, there were severe lockdowns in those countries, um, a lot of people were tipped into extreme poverty um, from perhaps being on a more subsistence level in the past year. Um, there were such strong restrictions, it's very difficult for people to move even within their own countries um, during that period. So you've got the situation of, of pent-up demand. And then at the end of last year in November, they got hit by two of the heaviest hurricanes that have hit the region in the last decade or more. Um, you know, spreading quite a lot of devastation, including, you know, not only in remote rural areas, but heavily populated city areas like uh, the second city of Honduras, San Pedro Sula where you know, the, um, the poor neighborhoods, the working neighborhoods around the city center were particularly bad hit um, and didn't see a lot of relief for a long time. So you have this combination of factors uh, pushing people really um, quite severely into poverty. There was a World Food Program statistic that was run uh, in a report just a few weeks ago that said that uh, hunger in Central America as a whole um, had quadrupled uh, in the last year and a half, two years. So we're looking at 8 million people in a situation of not having enough food uh, in their homes. Um, and so you combine that with a situation of a, a, a change of government, a, a relaxing of pandemic uh, restrictions in these countries, 
Um, and people are beginning to move out of the desperation that you described. You know what I keep thinking about, Jack, is the children, when I hear about Mexico, you know, ramping up their um, patrols along the border with Guatemala, uh, militarized patrols, I just think of all the children that actually make it to the U.S. border and then the ones that didn't. And what happens to them that, that couldn't get across the border between Guatemala and Mexico because they were stopped by, you know, a police force there? The National Institute of uh, Migration is warning that migrants are actually being encouraged to take children along their journey to seek asylum. I don't know if they're being told that they're more likely to get into the U.S. if they have children with them. But can you give us a sense of just what these children face on this journey? And then what happens to them, you know, once they reach the border? Yeah, and there's uh, a number of uh, situations. Uh, it, it is true that uh, uh, smugglers do encourage people um, to bring children. Um, and the word also gets out through other, you know, other forms, social media. Um, uh, word of mouth spreads that, uh, you know, children are um, being released into the United States. Um, so people do start to move more with their children. You do also get situations of people, you know, a lot of the unaccompanied minors are accompanied. They're accompanied by uncles or aunts or other family members, but not uh, their guardians. Um, and then you have a situation of some children are moving um, on their own with, with guides uh, or, or coyotes, smugglers, basically. Um, often because their parents are already in the United States um, and, you know, they manage to save up enough money and they're sending... Um, sending for their children to be with them. Um, the journey is very arduous. Um, there is a number of ways. Sometimes children move on buses. Um, if you know, if the parents or the family members have been able to pay enough, um, <clears throat> there's even cases of uh, children being flown, and uh, you know, adults as well. Um, at least through the stretch of Mexico, um, which you know uh, uh, makes the, makes the trip safer. Um, it's quite dramatic. You know, some. Uh, 95 um, migrants, including a few children, were captured in a Monterey airport um, about a week ago. Um, the journey is, you know, the journey can be very uh, scary. If children are caught <clears throat> by um, migration officials in Mexico, Mexico's law is actually now um, has similar provisions to US law. Um, children can't be easily held in detention in migration detention centers. Um, which some believe is also acting as another incentive because uh, families are, are finding that they're being released because they can't be held. Um, and, you know, that law, I think, is complicating Mexico's efforts to send families and children back to the countries uh, that they came from. So U.S. officials were set to meet with Guatemalan ministers, but that meeting has since been postponed. So. Uh, what is your understanding of the relationship that the Biden administration has with representatives from Guatemala? Um, I think from Guatemala in particular, I think there is a relatively good relationship. The um, Biden administration officials <clears throat> who were due to uh, um, go to Guatemala yesterday, where they called off their trip um, because of uh, their claims were canceled because of volcanic ash. Um, from an active volcano just outside Guatemala City. Um, those officials, Juan Gonzalez and uh, Ricardo Zuniga, um, have been quite outspoken about what the new administration intends to do in terms of priorities in Central America. And they are going to focus a lot on corruption and rule of law issues, which were on the back burner, uh, back burner under the uh, Trump administration, which is much more focused on immigration enforcement. Um, this government believes, uh, this administration believes that the underlying causes of many of the problems in, in Guatemala uh, and, uh, and Honduras and El Salvador uh, relates to bad governance. It relates to corruption um, and a lack of uh, justice uh, for the populations. So there's going to be a lot of focus on that. I would expect them to be quite robust in, um, in, their, in their relations with, with the governments in terms of pushing initiatives to um, you know, achieve uh, better criminal justice systems and more <clears throat> rule of law. Um, Guatemala in particular has been uh, cooperative, let's say, with the United States. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you know, uh, their uh, enforcement action around the migrant caravan in January was 
was uh, very robust. Um, you know, arguably, uh, human rights groups uh, were concerned about the militarized nature of these uh, operations. Same in in Mexico. Um, I think the administration officials seem seem to be quite outspoken about uh, the situation in Honduras uh, and in South in El Salvador in terms of uh, the governments there. Your reporting, we appreciate it. Frank Jack Daniel, thank you so much for your reporting. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on the show.